Happy Kids TV. The Holy Tales. Hello, kids. Welcome back. Hello, Holy. It is time for you to tell us a story. Well, do you know how Jesus brought together all of his twelve disciples? N uh. All right then. Today, I am going to tell you the story about how Jesus brought in fishermen and a few other men to follow him and make them his disciples. Who is a disciple, Holy? Um, a disciple is a person who believes in someone and follows his ideas and philosophies. Come on, now let us begin with the story. Okay. Long, long time ago, one day, Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee, and as he walked down, he passed boat after boat after boat. The sea was actually a big, beautiful lake where many fishermen would gather to catch fish. All day long, hard-working fishermen would work at the lake, emptying their nets. And getting ready to go back in the water, or gathered their day's catch to sell in the market. As Jesus walked along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, he walked past many such boats, and watched two men working on a particular boat. These men were Simon and his brother Andrew. Both Simon and Andrew were working very hard. And were really frustrated about not catching any fish the night before. Andrew and Simon had met Jesus before, when John the Baptist had introduced them to him right after he was baptized. However, that meeting was for a very short while. Jesus walked up to Andrew and Simon and said. Could you please put your boat out in the water for a little while? Andrew and Simon agreed. Jesus stepped onto the boat and started teaching from there. People who were walking by the shore and even the fishermen who were working in their boats stopped to listen to Jesus' teaching. After Jesus was done teaching, he turned to Simon and said. Go out deeper into the sea and put down your nets. Simon was hesitant. He said, "Lord, we spent all night trying to catch fish, but we haven't even caught a single one. But only because you are asking, I will do so and put down the nets." As soon as Simon and Andrew let down their nets. They caught thousands and thousands of fish, almost breaking their nets. They waved to their friends James and John in the next boat, seeking help. They filled in the boat with the fish they caught, but the boat was full and was beginning to sink. Simon was shocked and amazed. He bowed down to Jesus and said, "Lord." I am a sinner, and you should not be near me," Jesus calmly replied. "Come, follow me, and I shall make you fishers of men." Andrew, Simon, James, and John left everything and went with Jesus immediately. They left behind their boats, their nets. The fish they caught, and everything that they had with them. They did not doubt Jesus at all. They had all the faith and trust in him. This way, Jesus asked twelve men to follow him, and they became his disciples. All these men believed in Jesus, and had immense faith in what he said. They helped Jesus to spread God's word to other people all around the world, and hence they were known as the fishers of men. 
However, not all these twelve disciples of Jesus were fishermen. They all came from different lines of work and different families. They were also not perfect. But they all believed in Jesus, and that's what made them follow him. So, did you like the story? Of course we did, Holy. It was a wonderful story. <laughs> I am glad. Go ahead, Holy. You have my permission. <laughs> Thank you, Gumbo. So, our first story is about Andrew, one of Jesus' twelve disciples. Andrew was one of the brothers of Peter and was born to a man named Jonas. He lived in a town called Bethsaida in Capernaum and was a fisherman by profession before Jesus called him to be his disciple and follower. Before becoming Jesus' disciple, Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. He had heard about Jesus from John's teachings about the Son of God coming to save the people. Once Andrew became Jesus' disciple, he went to places like Scythia, Greece, and Asia Minor to preach his teachings to the people. Andrew's main purpose in life was to bring others to follow Jesus. And that's what he did. And hundreds and hundreds of people soon became Jesus' followers. According to traditional stories, Andrew died a martyr in Achaia, Greece, in a small town called Patra. Andrew died soon after the then governor, Epius's wife, was healed and converted to Christian faith. And shortly after, the governor's brother too became a Christian. This angered Apias, and he arrested Andrew immediately, condemning him to die on the cross. Andrew was supposed to be crucified on the same shaped cross as Jesus. This made Andrew feel unworthy of him, dying on the same shaped cross as his master. He begged Apias to make his cross different. Apias agreed and made an X-shaped cross for Andrew on which he was crucified. This cross is still called St. Andrew's Cross, which is known as one of his apostolic symbols. Later, a symbol of two crossed fish was also applied to Andrew because before becoming Jesus' disciple, he was a fisherman. So, that was the story of Andrew. That was a really nice story, Holy. I am glad you children liked it. All right, Holy. Oh, yes. Today, I am going to tell you the story of Bartholomew. But, Tolu, what? <laughs> it is Bartholomew. Oh, Bartholomew. Now I get it. Then let's not waste any more time and begin with his story. Bartholomew Nathaniel was another one of the twelve disciples of Jesus. And he was the son of Talmai, who lived in Cana of Galilee. Like the other twelve disciples of Jesus, he too had an apostolic symbol. And his is the symbol of three parallel knives. Bartholomew was a missionary from Armenia. And he was one of the twelve disciples who came from royal or noble blood. His father was Talmai, the king of Geshur, whose daughter was the wife of David and the mother of Absalom. Bartholomew was probably not his first name, but his second. His first name is considered to be Nathaniel, and Jesus often referred to him as the Israelite in whom there is no guile. Bartholomew was a great researcher of the scripture, and he was also a great scholar of law. He became a huge follower of Jesus, 
and soon completely surrendered his life to Jesus and was one of the most adventurous missionaries. Bartholomew went all around the world, preaching with Philip in places like Phrygia, Hierapolis, and also in Armenia. He established the Armenian churches and died a martyr. Bartholomew died as a martyr for his Lord as he was flayed alive with knives. Many scholars say that he probably died in India when he went to preach there. I do not like those bad men who killed the twelve disciples of Jesus. All right, Freckles, all right. Don't get angry. Did you not like the story? Of course I did, but... Let's not think about all that. I hope you enjoyed the story too. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Today I'm going to tell you the story of James, the Elder. The Elder? That was his name? Well, no, but that's what he was mostly known as. But why? Let us listen to the story and we shall find out the reason soon. One of Jesus' twelve disciples was James the Elder. James was the son of a man called Zebedee and he was also the brother of John, one of Jesus' disciples. John and James were very close to one another as brothers and they were almost inseparable. James was a fisherman and he lived with his family in Bethsaida, Capernaum and then in Jerusalem. James went all around Jerusalem and Judea preaching Jesus' teachings where he was beheaded by King Herod in AD 44. However, the New Testament of the Bible tells us very little about the life of James, apart from when it mentions about his brother John. James was always known for being courageous and forgiving. He was never jealous of anyone or any of the disciples of Jesus. He had completely surrendered his faith and life to Jesus as a follower and as a disciple. However, most of his life he lived in the shadow of his brother John. Like all the other disciples, he too had his own apostolic sign, which was three shells, representing him as a pilgrim off the sea. Oh, he was the elder brother of John, and that is why he was known as James the Elder. Yes, that is right. Hope you children have enjoyed the story. Of course we have. We always do. <laughs> I am so glad to hear that, Freckles. That was one more story about one more disciple of Jesus. Yes, yes. And today I am going to tell you the story about James the Younger. What? We have a younger James too? <laughs> yes, we do. All right. Let's begin with the story and we'll get to know all about him. There was another man named James among Jesus' disciples. In the circle of disciples, he was known as James the Younger. James the Younger was born to a man and his wife named Alphaeus and Mary. He lived with his family in Galilee and was also the brother of another disciple called Jude. James the Younger wrote the Epistle of James and he went all around Palestine and Egypt to preach about Jesus and his teachings. It was in Egypt where he was crucified. James was one of the little known disciples of Jesus. He was a man of strong character and had a very fiery and adventurous personality. Very little is known about James the Younger's death but many scholars believe that he might have died a martyr too and his body was cut into pieces and so the saw became his apostolic symbol. 
So that was the story of James the Younger. It was a nice story, Holy. Thank you for telling us all about him. The pleasure is all mine. Hope you enjoyed the story as much as we did. Welcome, kids. I knew you'll be here soon. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of John. John Wanerius was the younger son of Zebedee and Salome, and the younger brother of James the Elder, who was also a disciple of Jesus. John was one of the most beloved disciples of Jesus, and like his elder brother, he too was a fisherman. John lived with his family in Bethsaida and Capernaum and later in Jerusalem. He went around the world preaching his master's doctrines and also went and preached in the churches of Asia Minor. After John became a disciple to Jesus, he wrote the Gospels of John 1, John 2, John 3 and Revelations. Once. John was banished to the Isle of Patmos as a prisoner for preaching in the name of Jesus. Later, he was freed and he eventually died due to old age. John was not only a man of action, but he was also very ambitious and held no tolerance for unfair or selfish people. John was very close to another disciple named Peter and they would often be sent together for ministry work. But it was John who always stood out and acted as the spokesperson of the band. As years went by, old age caught up with him, and he soon forgot all about his ambition. All he remembered was the Lord's command of love. John once wanted to take his own life, by drinking poison from a chalice. But the Lord spared his life for all the good deeds he had done all his life. He finally died of natural causes, and the chalice with the snake became his apostolic symbol. That was the story of John. I hope you children enjoyed it. Oh yes, we sure did. That was quite an interesting story. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Yes, and today I am going to tell you the story of Judas. Judas? The traitor? Hmm, I would like to know more about him. Come on, let's begin with the story. Judas is carried was the son of a man called Simon, and he lived in Curioth of Judah. In spite of being a disciple, he was the traitor, because of whom Jesus was put to the cross. He betrayed Jesus and broke his trust for 30 pieces of silver. However, the guilt of betrayal eventually led him to kill himself. Judas was one of the closest disciples of Jesus, and he was given the responsibility of being the treasurer. Unlike the other disciples, who were Galileans, Judas was a Judean, as he came from Judea, near Jericho. Judas was also one of the outspoken members, who were quite prominent among all the twelve disciples. Judas loved his nation with all his heart and always wanted to do something big. So he joined Jesus' band to fulfill his own nationalistic dreams and wishes. Judas would often take undue advantage of being the treasurer and take money from the common fund for his own personal use. Jesus knew and understood all of this but he never judged him for that. Judas betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver is of great mystery to people even now. It is difficult for people to see someone so close to Jesus who was a witness to so many miracles and teachings of his master 
could ever betray him into the hands of his enemies. But it is not Judas' betrayal that put Jesus on the cross. It was our sins. Later, Matthias replaced Judas among the twelve disciples, and he went to places like the shores of the Caspian Sea and Cappadocia to spread the gospel. So that was the story of Judas the traitor. I see. So the lesson for today is, we should not take undue advantage of the power given to us, and also not be greedy, like Judas. Well done, Freckles. So it is important that you all be good children. Yes, Holy, we will. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about the disciple called Jude. Nice! Come on, Holy. Go on with the story. Jude was another disciple of Jesus, who was also known as Thaddeus or Libius. He was born to a man called Cleophas and his wife Mary. He was also the younger brother of James, the younger, and lived with his family in Galilee. Jude preached in places like Assyria and Persia and finally died a martyr in Persia. Jude is often known as the man with three names by many scholars and in the Bible he is often referred to as Judas the Zealot. Jude was very intense as a person and had very strong feelings about his own nation and he wanted the world to know about Jesus not as a savior, but as a king. At the Last Supper, he asked Jesus, Lord, why do you want to reveal yourself to us and not the people? To his question, Jesus had explained to him how the way of love is much greater than the way of power. The way of love brought people closer to one another. Jude went to different places to preach about the Gospels. He even went to Edessa, near the Euphrates River, to preach. Wherever he went, he healed many people, and many of them soon became followers of Jesus, in the name of the Master. Jude was killed with arrows at Ararat when he was traveling on a ship to other places from Edessa to preach. His chosen apostolic symbol was the ship because he was a missionary thought to be a fisherman. Mmm, that was a good story, Holy. Yes, it indeed was. So who are we going to hear about today? Well, today I'm going to tell you the story of Matthew. And he also had another name. Another name? Oh yes, he was also called Levi. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Alright then, let's begin with the story. Matthew was the son of Alphaeus and he lived in Capernaum and his name meant a gift of God. The call of Matthew to the band of Jesus' disciples is of great importance. Matthew's other name was Levi, which was probably given by Jesus when he became a disciple. Matthew was a tax collector and a publican. He was engaged in public service work and gathered the taxes which the people paid. However, in those times, the Jews hated the tax gatherers because they believed that it was the right of the people to pay taxes as a tribute only to God. Paying it to someone else meant breaking of the law. The Jews hated the tax gatherers not only for this religious reason, but also because they were very unjust and unfair towards them. The Jews regarded these tax collectors nothing less than criminals. Matthew was one of them. Like every other tax collector, he would assess taxes for their people and also lend them money and charge high rates of interest from them. Yet, 
Jesus chose him from amongst all the hated men and made him one of his own. Being the master, he saw the potential in the tax collector of Capernaum. Matthew was different from all the other disciples of Jesus, who were mostly fishermen. He knew how to write, and with the power of the pen, he brought to the world the teaching of Jesus in the Hebrew language. The apostolic symbol of Matthew is three money bags which help us to remember that he was a tax collector before Jesus called him. That was quite an interesting story, Holy. So it is because of Matthew that we began to know more about Jesus. Hmm, I see. I hope you children like the story. Oh yes, we did. I am glad. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Today I'll tell you the story of Peter. Peter? The one who denied Jesus? Yes. Come on, let's hear his story. Simon Peter was the son of Jonas, the fisherman. He lived in Bethsaida and Capernaum and grew up to become a fisherman just like his father. He is known for doing massive missionary work and for going as far as Babylon to spread Jesus' words to the people. In the latter years of his life, he also wrote down two epistles of the New Testament. In all apostolic lists all over the world, Peter's name is mentioned first. However, he had many different names in other languages also. Peter's Greek name was Simon, and his Hebrew name was Cephas, which both meant rock. Peter lived in Capernaum with his wife, and every time Jesus went there, he would make Peter's home his headquarters. Peter was a Galilean too, like almost all the other disciples of Jesus. Among the twelve disciples, Peter was the leader. He was known to be the spokesman for all the twelve apostles. Peter always asked the most difficult and challenging questions to Jesus. It was Peter who asked how often one must forgive. He also wanted to know about the rewards of following Jesus. He was the one who confessed and declared that Jesus was the son of the living God. Yet. It was he who denied Jesus before a maiden. Peter had many faults, but his saving grace was his loving heart. When it was decided that Peter was to be martyred on a cross, he requested to be crucified with his head downward, as he believed he was not worthy of dying the same way as his Lord had died. And hence, his apostolic symbol is a cross upside down with crossed keys. So, did you enjoy the story? Yes, we did. It was a nice story indeed. Great. Well, today's story is about Philip. Uh-oh. Okay. Philip was one of Jesus' disciples who preached in Phrygia. He is known to have died a martyr in Hierapolis. Like Peter and Andrew, Philip too came from the town of Bethsaida, and he too probably was a Galilean fisherman. Philip's name comes to life in the Gospel of John, even though his name was recorded in the first three Gospels. The Gospel of John tells us that Philip was one of the first to whom Jesus addressed the words, Follow me. When Philip met Christ for the first time, he said to Nathanael, We have found him, of whom Moses and the prophets did write. Nathanael was skeptical about following Jesus, but Philip was not, not even once. He was known not to have a skeptic mind. He was simple and had abundant faith in Christ. Philip was a man with a warm and loving heart. He wanted to do a lot of things for others 
and help them. But he did not understand or see how it could be done. It is said that Philip died by hanging, and before he died, he requested his body to be wrapped in papyrus and not in linen like Jesus, because he thought his body was not worthy of getting treated in the same way as his Lord. His apostolic symbol is a basket, and most importantly, it was Philip who had stressed the cross as the sign of Christianity and victory. Whoa! That was a nice story. So it is because Philip that we have the cross as the sign of Christianity. Hmm. Yes. Didn't you enjoy the story? My friends and I surely did. Today's story is about Simon the Zealot. Zealot? Who's a zealot? Let's listen to the story and find out. The zealots were one of the little-known followers of Jesus, who were also known as the Canaanites or zealots. The zealots also lived in Galilee, and Simon the zealot was one of them. The zealots were fanatical Jewish nationalists who completely disregarded the suffering and struggle involved for what they regarded as the purity of their faith. The zealots had immense hatred for the Romans, and it was this hate that destroyed the city of Jerusalem. Josephus records that the zealots were reckless people and were zealous in good practices. Not much personal information is known about Simon the Zealot. But from the background of the Zealots, one can understand that he was a fanatical nationalist. He had immense devotion to the law and bitter hatred for people who dared to compromise with Rome. Yet, Simon emerged as a man of faith. He gave up all his hatred for the faith he had in his master and the love he was willing to share with the fellow disciples and especially Matthew, the Roman tax collector. There was a time when Simon the Zealot would have killed anyone in loyalty to Israel. He became a man who understood that God will accept no forced service. Simon the Zealot, too, died as a martyr, and his apostolic symbol is a fish lying on a Bible, which indicates that he was a fisherman who later became a fisher of men through preaching. That was an interesting story indeed. I'm glad you liked it. I hope you all enjoyed the story as much as we did. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Today I'm going to tell you the story about Jesus' last and final disciple, Thomas Didymus. Did he... Mm, us? It's Thomas Didymus, Tubby. Thomas Didymus was one of the lesser known disciples of Jesus. He lived in Galilee and went to preach Jesus' words in Parthia, Persia and India and probably received death as a martyr near Madras at Mount St. Thomas in India. Thomas was his Hebrew name and Didymus his Greek name. At times, he was also called Judas. The Bible does not tell us much about Thomas except his name. However, John in his Gospel defines him more clearly as being present in the raising of Lazarus in the upper room. He wanted to see nail prints in Jesus' hand and also the spear scar in his side to believe in him. Soon he was known as the Doubting Thomas. Thomas had a bewildered and confused mind and yet he was brave and courageous. Since he was a pessimistic man, he believed only in things which he could see. However, he had immense faith and was a devoted man. When Jesus rose from death, he came 
and invited Thomas to put his finger in the nail prints, in his hand and in his side. It is here we see Thomas making the greatest confession of faith, and Thomas's doubts transformed into faith. In India, Thomas was commissioned to build a palace for the king of India, where he was martyred to death with a spear for his lord. His apostolic sign is a bunch of spears, stones, and arrows. So, did you like the story? Oh yes, it was wonderful. We loved it. I hope you enjoyed the story as much as these kids did. We'll be back soon, so stay tuned. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the home.